This video is going to be a look at how David Montgomery and the Detroit Lions front offensive line tight ends were able to bully Green Bay, really, really wear down their front with a multitude of run concepts. Ben Johnson's offense was, uh, I don't want to say it was on full display because I'm, I'm quite sure that every week there's plays that he holds back or maybe holds back isn't the right phrase. I think the really smart and, and gifted offensive coordinators at every level of football, I think, kind of rotate in and out plays that they're going to use each week that are that are similar concepts, but maybe look different to the defense. So maybe you spend time preparing for a particular formation and, and run play or pass a complimentary pass play off of it, and you don't even see it that week. And, and I can tell you from personal experience, that's incredibly frustrating as a defensive coordinator. And when you deal with offensive coordinators like that, you um, – you do respect them, but you kind of really dislike them because they take time out of your life to prepare. Ben Johnson seems like one of those guys. You're going to see, you're going to see inside zone schemes, outside zone schemes. You'll see an F counter play in here, I believe, where Sam Laporta blocks it really well. I hope I've included that one in. A reverse to Khalif Raymond, multiple short yardage concepts where where Lions offensive linemen are just winning at the point of attack. Uh, just a complete physical win for this Detroit Lions team on the road against the Packers. I'll kind of focus on the 10th drive. The Packers had cl closed to 27-17, and then the 10th possession, the Lions got the ball, and it seemed like everybody was pissed off. Uh, ben Johnson, Jared Goff on down. David Montgomery was running incredibly hard. On that drive, I think Montgomery and Jamir Gibbs touched the ball 10 times combined. Two really cool pass plays to Montgomery started that drive. Gibbs, I think, had two really nice runs. Montgomery, of course, finished it off on the fourth and goal from the one to push the lead to 34-17 after, unfortunately for the Packers, the unsportsmanlike conduct uh, foul was called on Quay Walker trying to jump over or successfully jumping over the offensive line on the uh, field goal. You guys let me know what you think of the video as we go. If you enjoy these videos, you know, please consider subscribing to the channel. I appreciate you guys' time. Let's get to the film. All right, so this first one is going to be from the second drive. It's going to be Jameer Gibbs, uh, right side for seven yards on a second and eight. Now, these guys get people moving up front. Sewell, Ragnar, I mean, all of them. They get people moving to give the running backs an opportunity to, to make a cut. And in most cases, I feel like Gibbs and Montgomery are, are making the right move. You can see they're getting people moving. Nice job taking over here. Gibbs is going to hit this front side. Watch Sewell. Sewell is currently engaging with the edge defender. And then he's going to peel off and go get another guy, allowing Gibbs to get downhill, basically run into his own guy on this outside zone. Seven-yard gain on a second and eight. Gibbs hits things really quick. All right, third drive. Gibbs again for seven yards. This is a cool play. I think I'm going to give you the end zone angle of this one. It's a, I would call it a same side run. We know Ben Johnson likes to attack to the boundary. It's kind of like the thing to do for a lot of these offensive quarters in the NFL. But Gibbs is lined up on the right for golf. And again, I'll give you the end zone angle in a moment. And you're going to get two pulling linemen out here uh, to the boundary in front of Gibbs on the same side. He s sets his foot. Golf comes to him. So he can now get downhill, off tackle, outside. Another seven-yard gain. Let's check out the end zone angle so you'll see the pulling lineman and the timing of it. Also, a really nice job, I think, by the left guard cutting down this backside D-tackle to um, remove any chance of penetration or pursuit from the backside. Left tackle is just cupping and sealing on the backside. That left guard has cut. And here we go. You've got nice seals on the front side by Laporta and Sewell. Pull by the guard, pull and wrap by the center, and Gibbs is following them in nice timing. Super athletic guys up front there. You can't do that with uh, you know offensive linemen who aren't athletic and quick enough to get out there on the edge. Same side run into the boundary. As a defensive coordinator, I mean, as a as a guy evaluating Lions film, I enjoy it. As a defensive coordinator, there's a part of me that uh, wants to dislike Ben Johnson. I'll be honest with you. <clears throat> All right, Montgomery right side. I think this is a great example of patience. This is a first and 10 from the 25. Same drive, still the third drive. Same drive as the run by Gibbs. You got the motion back across. Sometimes this motion is in front of golf. This one is behind. I think it's the same motion, the same play call, just a different tag for the motion to give the defense a different look. 
And I think this is great patience. You've got the guard pulling, and he's going to insert into the B gap. I don't give you the end zone angle for some reason. There's some running backs who would bounce this here. But Montgomery is, is patient enough to take this downhill behind the pulling lineman, get downhill eight yards. I think it's a really cool run. I think he deserves credit for um, his patience and his ability to trust what the offensive line is going to do in front of him. And there's a lot of people that would bounce that. And you can see this edge defender is playing peekaboo, trying to jump to the outside. He might have been trying to bait Montgomery into going to the outside because he's dealing with a tight end that he feels like he can shed off of. And he did that you know, somewhat successfully there. <clears throat> Goal line. I think the announcers did a nice job on Thursday night with some of these descriptions. This is one of the situations where you have two tight ends that basically combo an edge defender. You got tightly aligned Reynolds. So I think this is Laporta here, and I think that is Brock Wright. Late motion by Wright. Ball is snapped as soon as he clears golf, who reverse pivots. Nice job of this. It's kind of like a reverse Jill, meaning the, the X receiver is going inside of the edge defender to go get this safety. They're not worried about this guy at all because what they're going to do is let Laporta engage the edge defender. And this is really cruel and evil. Then the second tight end, who's got a full run, is going to go kick him out while he's being engaged. You can see you don't have to block this corner right here, this DB, at all because he's outside leverage. The only guy that was there to tackle Montgomery was his own offensive lineman. I think I'll give you the end zone angle. Let me let me deal with one thing that I talked about. I called it Jill before. Um, with a tight end who's on the line and a receiver who's off, which is not what we have here, the Lions and Ben Johnson are famous for – I did a video of it in the offseason, by the way, if you want to check it out. Tight end step out to the edge defender, base block him out, and then the receiver step in and insert inside of that block. This is kind of like Jill, except it's not, meaning there's no insert, but there's a fold element between Reynolds and Laporta. Laporta takes him on. Brock Wright's getting basically a free shot. I think the Rams and the 49ers really uh, patented this, and everyone else has stole it, including Ben Johnson. End zone angle, same play. You'll see eight, release inside, go up to the safety. 87, Laporta, go get the edge defender. And then Brock Wright come and get him second. Like I said, it's really cruel and evil. And the defensive coordinator side of me, you know, doesn't like this cheat code that's there. But you can see Montgomery, the only guy there to tackle Montgomery is Decker. Touchdown, third possession. Fourth drive. Uh, this is also kind of evil. Reverse to Khalif Raymond. Now, I wonder how often Ben Johnson runs the sweep to the field, because we know he runs it to the boundary a lot. So I'll pause it here and explain what I mean. He's going to get Gibbs and some pulling linemen to the field. And this is a play that I, I feel like he runs often to the boundary. So I wonder how much of this is um, teams maybe not understanding that certain plays are run to the field and certain plays are run to the boundary. That's a realistic element at every level. But you get to pull. Gibbs is getting the football. Raymond around the edge. Goff gets out there. Sewell gets out there. 40-yard gain. Really, really badass football play. Reverse to Khalif Raymond. I feel like Ben Johnson does this stuff just enough to where the defense doesn't, I don't want to say doesn't consider it, but these these things, I think he could do maybe 10, 12% more and still get away with it from the standpoint of it being really effective. I feel like when he calls these plays, they work. And you guys, if you're a Lions fan watching this long, first of all, thank you. Second of all, let me know if that's your perception. These plays, I remember the, the jet sweep to Iman Ross St. Brown against the, uh, Washington last year. Two of them, in fact, um, that worked. One of them for 56 yards and one of them for like 11 yards on a third and 12. And the very next play, St. Brown caught on a fourth down to finish the game, close out the game, that win against Washington, I think in week two at home, if memory serves. But it seems like these plays work whenever Ben Johnson calls them. And, and I think it's because they're used so infrequently, if, the, if that makes any sense at all. Um, after that, 
settled for a field goal. I think this is now late second quarter. We've got a third and one. And Green Bay is in like a goal line look. You got the same formation that we showed on that go- that um touchdown run, that three yard touchdown run by Montgomery. You've got tight end, Laporta, tight end, right? So this is 12 personnel with the one being the, the one running back and the two being your two tight ends if you're unfamiliar. But it's third and one, Montgomery for seven yards. And this time, Laporta's not dealing with the edge defender. He's leaving him, going up to the second level. And you can see Quay Walker has stayed inside here. So Laporta really doesn't have any work. He's trying to get up to the front side inside linebacker. And Quay Walker doesn't press hard enough, I guess. But look, I mean, when you get the end zone angle, you'll see what I mean. Quay Walker, if he folds outside too soon, then he's wrong. And David Montgomery's going to hit this downhill. What I'm saying is... This edge defender's in this gap. Quay Walker clearly could play this gap. Laporta's working up to go get him. Gets to the second level and there's no work. Montgomery just bounces it outside. Nice little seam, seven-yard gain. Let's watch Brock Wright. We'll watch it one more time. Brock Wright in that same motion that I talked about on the goal line. Left to right on our screen. Right to left for the uh, offense. You recall on that touchdown run, that three-yard touchdown run by Montgomery. Laporta stepped to the edge defender, and then Brock Wright went and hit him second while he was in being, being engaged. In this case, Laporta is going to slip inside, not deal with him at all. Wright kicks him out, stays on him. Seven or eight yard gain. Physical uh, style of play that the Lions bring, if you ask me. Same drive. First and ten. And this, nope, I, my apologies. This is going to be the fourth quarter. Somehow I missed the play. Hold on. Yeah, I did. All right. So this is the beginning of the fourth quarter. I think it's like 14.55 left in the quarter to begin the 10th drive. 27-17. This is not a, a run play. Montgomery's lined up in the backfield. It's going to be a screen down here to the boundary, which should not surprise any of you that Ben Johnson's attacking to the boundary a lot. Sewell getting out there in front. Montgomery tight tight ropes along the sideline a little bit for an eight-yard gain. Two plays later. I love this play. This might be my favorite play that I saw from the game. First and 10. Montgomery's in the backfield. They've been hitting them downhill a lot with him. Inside zone, outside zone. Some F counter stuff. You got the motion. It's occupying people to the side. Should occupy at least two people. Iman Ross St. Brown, I think, intentionally cuts this short to get this defender's eyes on him. I think this is all designed to allow the complementary route. I, th- I would call these just clear-out routes. Not that Ben Johnson would never throw to them, but my point is, I think what they're doing is Essentially, an outside run play, a toss play is what this is. Off of a play action fake under center. And the timing of it is really cool. I think the timing of a lot of Ben Johnson's under center play action plays is really aligned with the routes. And in this case, I think this route by Iman Ross St. Brown, instead of you know getting the wheel out to the sideline, he's intentionally running it inside of this defender to pull that defender out of that area, let David Montgomery run onto that space. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense. I think it's a 12-yard gain on first and 10. Three plays into the drive. Now Montgomery for eight yards, I think left tackle. So this is just they're just going and getting them now. There's no trickery. There's no... Motion tight end and combo in the edge defender. Same formation, but now you've got St. Brown here instead of Brock Wright. So it was 12 personnel with Brock Wright on the touchdown run. And then on the other play where I showed you the end zone angle, kind of talking about Laporta working up and Quay Walker having an opportunity to come down, and he did not. Now you got the same formation, but it's done out of 11 personnel. So there's one less interior defender there, a little bit of a lighter box. Montgomery takes advantage for eight yards, and they are on the move. Third and two. I love this play call as well. Let Gibbs go get it. And you've got a D-tack. I mean, defensive players have to do this sometimes. Guess. Uh, that's maybe the wrong word. I don't believe this is a called stem uh, by this D-tackle. You'll see it from the end zone angle. He stunts 
inside, and when he does, there's a two-gap bubble there. This is an easy run for Gibbs to hit front side for six yards. Offensive line is still working up on people. Here's what I'm talking about. Got an A-gap defender here, C-gap defender, B-gap defender, and what's going to happen on the snap, he's going to stunt across face. And I don't think that's the call because what you end up with is a B gap that has now created a second gap because 93 has has essentially left his gap. He's crossed the center's face. Center fell down, don't get me wrong, but you can see the wide open hole. I think one of the announcers even mentioned that. I thought the announcers did a generally a pretty good job during the game, um, even though they didn't really cover it when the Lions suddenly got called for three penalties in like a seven-play stretch. But third and two, great conversion. We know how the drive ended or how it was going to end, I should say, on this fourth and three field goal with 8-13 left in the game that was going to make it 30-17. to Like, okay, cool, it's a penalty on Quay Walker. I'm not too sure I really even agree with or like that rule, to be real. I mean, if a human being can jump over the line, I don't really have a problem with it. But I understand the explanation of the rule, but it's still physically an impressive thing, at least for me that the guy can pull that off in the middle of that situation. Unfortunately for Quay Walker and the Packers, it was a it was a penalty. And then what interests me about this call, this fourth and goal from the one, is, well, Dan Campbell, you kind of knew he was going to go for it. But they had done this, the Lions, on short yardage stuff earlier, being 13 personnel. You've got a five-man surface here, three of which is tight ends. So 13 personnel, off-screen to this side is a wide receiver. They're going to come. They're coming downhill. Goal line look by the Packers again. Quay Walker's not really being engaged. Um, not coming downhill, and David Montgomery, you know, runs. I don't want to say runs over him, but is able to power into the end zone despite contact from him. Montgomery had a hell of a game. I understand there's a lot of people that would like to see Jameer Gibbs get the ball more. I mean, why would too? But. You got a guy that went out there and took 30 carries, 32 carries, uh, to be precise, a couple of weeks after being injured and missing a game. I think is pretty amazing. And the way the offensive line got after people really set the tone, softened the Packers up like a bunch of body blows, maybe in a uh, MMA or boxing fight. You guys let me know. This seems like par for the course for this offensive line, 10, 12 weeks a year. If they can do that every week and, and get Montgomery and Gibbs, you know, space to be able to make cuts, come downhill on people, run out, run over or power into defenders who are dealing with a blocker, uh, the sky's the limit for this offense. They can do anything they want because under center, then they're going to be able to go play action concepts and they're going to put people in a vertical bind, meaning linebackers and second level defenders. Do I come downhill and commit to this? Not talking about the fourth and goal from the one. I mean, you got to come downhill, but I'm talking about middle of the field, in between the 30s, between the 25s. Do I come downhill to attack this run play? What if it's under center play action? I'm really opening myself up. I feel like you can see evidence of players on defense so far. We're only through five game, four games, excuse me. I feel like you can see evidence of players with that conflict in their brain, playing with that conflict. Meanwhile, the offensive linemen for the Lions are getting out and punching them in the face along with tight ends and fullbacks. It was cool to watch that 10th possession. I'm going to do a possession video sometime Saturday, maybe Saturday night. I don't know. If you've ever seen one, I try. I go through the whole possession, talk about plays, usually a 20-minute video. But um, let me know if you'd be interested in that. The 10th possession is one that seems really interesting to me. It seems like a moment when Ben Johnson was like, okay, it's 27-17. Let's show you what we can do because everything worked. Appreciate you guys' time. If you enjoyed the content, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you think other Lions fans would enjoy this film study look at how David Montgomery and the Lions run game really uh, took the Packers out, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.